The history of efforts to build so-called micro-foundations for macroeconomic models just constantly crash into this problem, right? right? So people, I mean, it's amazing how, <laughs> here's, a, here's a no one ever learns uh, theorem, right? Uh, over and over again, enthusiasm will break out in economics for building micro, we put it, building micro-foundations of macro models. Well, we should learn and stop, right? Because every one of them crashes into this problem fairly swiftly. Right, that you that you wind up with, uh, with more than one way, right, of reconstructing your macro. You, you got a bunch of data. You build a you test a macroeconomic model. You test it, test it, test it. Everything fitting very very nicely, and then it turns out there's more than one microeconomic right. story that you can tell about it, right? And and therefore we'll generate the macro model because we're generating predictions, not just about macro states, but typically you're trying to generate predictions about micro states. And you'll discover that you that you generate different predictions depending upon which of several microeconomic stories is taken to be the foundations of the macro story. Um, I, let me what, now. I want to just ask a question about Don's example there. Does that mean that when this happens, you have a macro model, which is uh, adequate? Adequate, adequate for the, the data macro. you've seen? Yeah, that's right. And so. What you'd like to be able to do is say, see, now I'm on the right track. Uh, uh, I have this macro model which, which covers the data quite handily. Here's the micro model it derived from. But the trouble is that there's another micro model which, using the same rigorous derivations, gives you the same macro model. And those two micro theories disagree at some point that's in the right. future. Well, at some yeah. point in the future, then exactly. they must disagree with the evidence in the world, right? They well, must, that's, I mean, that right. is, so at right. some point, as you gather more evidence, you're yeah, calling on their predictive power. The past, but right. as you gather more evidence, one model will be falsified, one micro model will be falsified, and the other one won't. That's right. But I thought, exactly. Simon, your point was more about yeah, two micro, micro models, models from the same micro, not two micro models giving the same macro. Yes, so this is right, so <laughs> two coarse grainings of the same underlying system. So let me give you, I, I can give you my favorite example. Um, yeah, but a macro so, model is a coarse graining of a, a macro model is a coarse graining of a micro model. Yeah. Sure, but, but there might be more than one. So just, just like for the macro model, there might be more than one substrate. Uh, if we know the micro model, so if we know it's atoms in the room bumping into each other, and we've said several times you derive fluid mechanics or thermodynamics from that, right? Well, but that's not an innocent statement. You know, there's a, there's a specific process that we go through. We smooth over regions of space. Uh, and then we sort of have average quantities. And we, can, we find miraculously, or semi-miraculously, that we can have a theory that is sort of good in its own right and is much, much simpler. And therefore, we've learned something powerful about the world. We might have chosen, because the initial theory depended on positions and velocities of the atoms. We might have chosen to smooth over regions of velocity space instead of regions of space. No one can stop you from doing that. But what you get, so you, what you get is a different coarse graining of the atomic theory in the room, and it would be an utter mess. It would be like a, this huge 10 to the 23 equations governing all these unknowns with non-local weird, it would be completely useless because there is no regularity there to be found by averaging in, uh, in momentum space rather than in position space. But, what, and but then your, your, your logical point is that I would never be able to know whether or not those, those two theories, conventional fluid dynamics and weird momentum theory, were, were the same underlying. Exactly. You wouldn't, there, there's in general no principle, and, I, and I'm, I'm kind of standing up, so I'm going to finish right quick, but this is, these are the kinds of points that you get into. It's not, so absolutely, you wouldn't know if these two were, could actually be derived. You couldn't, you couldn't tell if they were, in general, there's no rule to tell if these are actually the same or they agree. Right? And so I just want to, I guess it's a, maybe a cautionary note that even the synchronic immersion stuff is hard. Physical theories fix all the physical facts. That is, it seems obvious and it seems like it's got to be true, but it's no more true than mathematical theories fix all the mathematical facts. So, okay. so let me ask a, qu a quick question just to, to cut beyond this. Yes. Um, this, there's sort of two classic ways that people have divided emergence theories. One is epistemological and one is ontological. We've been arguing over the ontological side of things. You've told me about a model theory that says there's an epistemological problem here. How does it address the ontological question, or can it, or does it? That's, that's a lovely point. I think you're absolutely right. This is what the story is, epistemological. Mm -hmm. And then I think, I, I don't have a lot of, 
I, I, don't, I don't know how to get an ontology on epistemology, but I, I'm not a philosopher, I don't know how to do that. 